Here at Woods End Soil Lab, we are exploring ways to test soils in a manner that is not disruptive of intrinsic biological factors. We call it natural soil testing. It differs from regular soil testing, which is focused on extracting nutrients in order to make recommendations for commercial fertilizers. Yet, a new challenge awaits us as soil health testing enters the popular arena. It turns out that the manner in which we sample and prepare soils for a routine lab test is not compatible with many soil biological tests. Chief among these are CO2 respiration and water-stable aggregates. Soils that come into our lab represent a wide variety of types and textures. Each of these soil samples needs to be treated carefully so as not to disrupt traits that reflect soil biology. To illustrate the severity of commonly used soil preparation methods, we took the same soil as originally sampled with stones, left, sifted and ground it middle, or only rolled and sifted on the right. This is a popular soil grinder used to prepare high volume samples. It consists of a high speed rotary flail. Unfortunately, it is so forceful that all structure present is lost. In this particular case, the soil with the gravel has been ground up completely. Pulverizing soil in this way will influence biology test results very significantly. The new technique that we've developed is based on a traditional soil roller still used at the National Soil Survey Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. We believe that overground soil is so destructured that it loses natural water absorptive properties and therefore the biology response is dramatically changed. The roller effectively crushes lumpy soil but does not pulverize it. When the sample appears appropriately flattened, we shake it through a smaller size sieve. Notice how the intrinsic structure is largely preserved in this sample. In our trial, the sample that was ground with stones on the left had only 3% water-stable aggregates and the lowest CO2 respiration. The middle sample that was machine ground with, without stones had 49% aggregates. And the hand-rolled sample showed 66% water-stable aggregates and had the highest respiration. This indicates that soil rolling instead of grinding improves our abilities to reveal soil biological properties. At the University of Maine Soil Lab, when soil health tests are selected, the lab switches to a traditional roller that actually dates to the 1960s. A UK soil lab, which also offers soil health tests, employs a set of rollers that do not overpulverize. Samples are loaded into a cylinder which rolls at low speed and the soil for testing falls through a two millimeter sieve. We believe that in order to develop commercial scale soil biology, we need to protect soil's natural original conditions in the lab as much as possible. These soils all represent differing levels of soil biological quality. The low impact soil handling methods makes it possible to more accurately test water stable aggregates and soil CO2 respiration. We hope you found this video interesting and we will be very happy to hear from anyone who wishes to pursue developing these kinds of soil handling and soil testing methods.